Hey everybody, it's uh, me, Matt, and uh, we're going to be looking a little bit deeper at something that I mentioned before. And what these are doing is kind of complicated. You can go ahead and dive in and read it if you want. Um, you may recall when we were looking at the custom ability task stuff, there was this section here where we were binding events and callbacks and functions, delegates, etc. And I said, it's kind of complicated, right? What these are doing is kind of complicated. Well, this video, we're going to dive into the complicated stuff. So, let's go. Okay. So we're in this little activate here with our custom ability task, right? Our success fail event that we created. And we have this only match exact. Otherwise, we have these other functions. So what's happening here? On the ability system component, there is this map. Generic gameplay event callbacks, which is made up of F gameplay tags and a multicast delicate. Delegate, not delicate. We're calling a find or add function on that map, and we're adding the success tag, which is our gameplay tag. And then we're calling on that, what is that? that that's the key, right? Yeah. Um, nope. It returns a reference to the value. So on that value, we're adding a U object, which is this, and then the address to the callback function, okay? So, map, we're adding a tag. The reference that this returns, the value reference, we are adding a U object with this object, this ability task object, and then the function on the object, so the success event callback. This is only for only match exact Boolean, right? Because if you have a hierarchy, let's say we have um, parent tag, child tag. We only want to fire if the child tag is returned. So what this is doing is we're only adding the specific tag to this map. And that's what that's going to look for. If we do not care, and we just want to call even if the parent is called, so parent child, if we send back parent, this will fire off. If we send back child, this will fire off. If we want either or, right? So what we're going to do there instead is call add gameplay event tag container delegate. Now a gameplay tag container, when we are calling this constructor right here and we're passing in success tag, this constructor implicitly gets all of the parents, the whole hierarchy down to that child tag. So success tag, if that were uh, four or five layers deep, it calls get parent and then it calls get parent and then it calls get parent etc and it grabs all of those so that's what's happening there and it's creating this container of all those tags and then just like before we're going to add um, or we're going to create a u object which is this ability task again and then the address to the other function right and there's a reason why, because these delegates are going to fire off two different, um, well, two different delegates, really, uh, that then have two different parameters. Let's keep going. Okay, so now we have bound our delegates to the ability system component one way or another with matching tag, exact, or not matching, so any parent can trigger the delegate broadcast as well. The way that we then broadcast that is we were calling send gameplay event to actor in blueprints. And here it is in our ability system blueprint library. So we're going to take a look at this function. This function takes the actor that we're calling to, takes the event tag, which could be the parent, and then the payload. The payload's the data, right? We're checking if that uh, pointer to that actor is valid. We are getting the ability system component off of that actor. We're then checking to make sure that pointer is also valid. We're making a prediction thing. I don't understand network prediction yet. Maybe I'll, I will someday and I'll make another video. And then we're going to call handle gameplay event by sending the tag 
and then the payload. So, let's go look at what that does. Here we are on the ability system component and we're calling the handle gameplay event. Tag comes in, payload comes in. We're going to go through something here called the gameplay event triggered abilities. This is another map. And this map is accessed when we're giving abilities on our add startup gameplay abilities on our character. Take a look at that real fast. We find it here, and if I shrink this down, on give ability, we can see right here our ability triggers where we're going through all of the info, blah, 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 with the ability itself. We're checking the trigger source right here. Is it a gameplay event? And if so, the triggered ability map is being set to this gameplay event triggered abilities. So the source of why this ability is triggered is a gameplay event. Otherwise owned tag triggered ability is something different. So that's where that map comes from. Okay, we're back in handle gameplay event. So we're looking into that map and if it contains the tag, we're going to eventually trigger the ability from the gameplay event. And that's where that happens. Now we move on. Current tag, what's happening here is it's going up each parent and it's going to check if that tag is valid. Once it hits a parent that doesn't exist, uh, it creates a default constructor of a gameplay tag. Yeah, if it returns an F gameplay tag of the default constructor, which I believe will then trigger this as not valid because there isn't actually, it's not a, it's not a real tag. It's just a, a default. So then we'll get out of that, that loop. Then we come down here, and this is where we find our two different maps that we were doing back here, right? We have this map, and then this add gameplay event tag container delegate to the other map. So, if we look through this map, and we find the event tag, and we add it only if it's a match exact, we're going to broadcast the payload. If we do broadcast on this on this uh, delegate, by the way, this is why over here we only have one parameter here and why we were binding this event callback. It's only firing off the payload on that delegate that's coming in. So that's where that comes from. And then we are adding our own tag because we know exactly the match with the payload to then pass to this next more complicated function. If we are not matching exact, we do not call that. We move on to here. So for each search pair in this map, which is this, which is a copy of our gameplay event tag container delegates, for each pair which consists of the tag container and the tag multicast delegate, we're looking if the search pair, which is this this pair. If the key, this gameplay tag container, is empty, or we're checking in that search pair the key if if this event tag matches any of this this key, so we're trying to match the event tag. If so, we broadcast, and this is where we broadcast on the value. So the value is the delegate, which is the function call, and we're sending the event tag and the payload in. We come back over here. This is what this is, tag payload. So that's where that is firing off. I don't quite know why empty is right here for an or. I'm kind of guessing that you, in the chance, in the off chance that the gameplay tag container has no tags, but for some reason we have a delegate inside this event container delegates. Um, we still want to fire off just in case there is a value and we need to broadcast the tag and the payload anyway. Um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's possible to fill up this map with an empty tag container uh, with no tags. I don't know. But apparently that's something that happens, so even if it's empty, it's going to grab the value and broadcast on it. 
And then we're returning the triggered count for the handle gameplay event where we're back here uh, and we're not using it. That's what's going on there. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Um, it, following the code can get a little muddy sometimes. You just keep going deeper and deeper and looking at function callbacks. Uh, hopefully that cleared up why we have two different things here and what the difference is between these and why we have two function calls here. It all has to do with how the ability system component handles match exacts or it creates a container and goes through the hierarchy and calls on every single parent into this. Now I believe ending the task if only trigger once I believe that prevents it from firing off on every um, every child so that this only occurs on the first parent that comes in and not each child call that comes in as well. I think that's what's happening there. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, I might make some more of these deep dive code videos. We'll see. Thanks for joining me. Good luck on your future ventures.